I am now. <laughs> it's been one of those sorts of mornings this morning. Um, we've had a few technical problems, as you can probably tell, um, that actually one of the issues is our, <laughs> our software we've just updated. Never a good idea to update a piece of software just before a live stream. And uh, it means basically that our words black out anything. So if anybody's watching online, I apologize that all you get is black words. Um, uh, when we're playing, so I think that's what happened. 
we go to a... Yay! Eve's doing a cracking job today. She's been really absolutely against it, so I really appreciate everything she's doing. Um, just some uh, notices I wanted to mention today. Obviously, it's our, our Harvest Festival today, a little bit lurky than normal. Uh, we do have uh, the opportunity for you to bring up, maybe in one of the, during one of the songs, there's a song after the sermon, if you w- haven't brought it up so far, to bring up your um, uh, offerings and put them in these, par- in these places. Uh, we're giving our parcels to uh, the food bank and to Carriers of Hope. Uh, and so, we're, you know, that's, uh, it's tough for them at the moment. And I know people are needing extra resources, so that's where we're giving uh, those to this weekend. We're going to leave them for 72 hours and do all the right COVID site stuff. And just also to mention the fact that right now um, we, we, as you know, Coventry is uh, uh, struggling a little bit, uh, as the whole country is, and we just want to encourage you, even though at the moment I'm allowed not to wear a mask, to remember what are the three things... Face, hands, space. Is that right? Or is it the other way around? Hands, space, face. No. Hands, face, space. Thank you. You get the three anyway. I'm a community messenger and I can't remember the message. So don't worry about it. But, um, but you know what we're talking about. We need to make sure uh, that that happens. Also, just to say, those are on our GDPR uh, list. You would have, re- and allow an email, you would have received an email uh, probably yesterday about the APCM, which is on, not this Tuesday, but the Tuesday after. Um, it's taking place here in church, but also there's opportunity uh, to w- do that on Zoom if you're uncomfortable with that. Uh, We've tried to keep it paper-free as possible, but I do believe, Jackie, if you've not got email, there's a few copies stashed away uh, if you really need paper. So that's uh, the next thing. A piece of really great news that I can't tell you all about, but I'll just give you where we're up to at the moment. Really excited to say we have offered our youth enabler job to somebody. So, and they've accepted, but we need to just work through all the detail of that, so I can't tell you anything until we get all that information through. But we're really excited. We're excited about the sense of calling on this person's life, life to this place. Really are. And so uh, we're excited about being able to tell you next week more of the details and, and hopefully introducing the person too. So uh, they don't know that yet, so if they're uh, are watching or here in the room with us, uh, they, they'll, they've just found that out. <laughs> okay. So uh, those are our notices for today. Uh, we are carrying on our series, uh, Fit for Good, but today we're looking a little bit at the life of Elijah rather than carrying on Ephesians. And you'll see as we carry on together how, how that fits in with Harvest and how that fits in with our continuing theme. But as we begin, what we're going to do right now is we're going to, uh, I hope, uh, I hope, I might go black now, it's possible. No, we're okay at the moment. We'll see how it works to do our confession. So we always begin a service like this because we know we're forgiven people. We know God has taken that sin from us, but we need reminding of his goodness on a regular basis. We need to almost re- Uh, visit those things, not to take them back into our hearts again, but to remember all that God has done for us. And so that's the reason we begin our services with a confession. Almighty God, our Father, we come to you with sad hearts to tell you that we have done wrong things and to ask for your forgiveness for wanting to live our lives our own way. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. For not doing as we are told, Lord, we're sorry, forgive us. For not sharing our things, Lord, we're sorry, forgive us. For not telling the truth, Lord, we're sorry, forgive us. For being jealous or cruel, Lord, we're sorry, forgive us. Father, we have often done wrong, and we ask you to forgive us. Help us to live our lives in such a way 
that others may see your glory in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as I say, we're going to be thinking a little bit about Elijah, but we really need to get up to speed with the story so far. So this is a little bit of a, hopefully, a recap movie, which will give you an idea of what has just happened before we are looking at the particular passage in the story we're thinking about today. Hopefully this is going to work. No rain fell in the land of Israel for three years. God was punishing the people for turning away from him to worship false gods. Without rain, the lakes and rivers dried up. People could not grow crops in the fields. Finally, God was ready to send rain. God told Elijah to go to Ahab, the king of Israel. So Elijah obeyed God. Elijah told the king, meet me at Mount Carmel. Bring the people of Israel and the prophets who worship false gods. King Ahab and the people met Elijah at the mountain. Elijah said, Make up your minds. If you believe the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Elijah set up a challenge to show who is the one true God. The prophets of the false god, Baal, set up an altar first and put a bull on it. Elijah said, Call to Baal and ask him to send a fire to your altar. I will call on the Lord, the God who answers by sending fire is the one true God. The prophets of Baal danced and cried out for hours, answer us, they said, but no one answered. Shout loudly, Elijah taunted them. Maybe he is sleeping, still no answer. Then the people Oh, we have problems. Don't worry, go back to uh, go back to us here. E. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to tell the rest of the story. This is the kind of morning it's been today. This is the kind of morning it's been today. So, what was happening in the story we were up to? So, the Baal prophets had tried everything they could to get the fire to come. Had the fire come? No. No fire. And so, so it was Elijah's turn. So it's Elijah's turn. So it was Elijah's turn. And so Elijah asked them to fill around where the altar was, full of water, just to make sure it really doubly, doubly was certain that... Uh, that it was really God's work and it wasn't him just sneaking a quick can of paraffin or whatever they had in those days to, to light it up. He made it totally and utterly wet and then prayed to God and suddenly the sacrifice burst into flame. It was amazing, totally amazing. Everybody was flabbergasted by the situation. They didn't have the word flabbergasted then, but if they did... They would, have, they would have had that word, had they used that word. For that situation. They would have indeed. Yes. Uh, it's nothing like doing things on the fly. So, <laughs> so, fantastic. So that's what happened. But then after that... After that, Elijah, the news went back that the prophets, all the people of Israel, had realised that actually they'd been following the wrong thing, that the prophets of Baal were, Baal were not telling the truth. The prophets of Baal came to a bit of a sticky end. We won't go too closely into that. It's not pretty. Um, and then the uh, king, Ahab, who was quite convinced by all of this stuff, by the way, went back to his wife, Jezebel, and told her what had happened. And she, who'd sent all the prophets of Baal and was trying to turn everyone to worship Baal. So that, the point at which we're going to join the story is the point at which Jezebel has told Elijah that she isn't happy and that doesn't matter how good he is or how blessed he is or how great this God is, she's going to have him and get her revenge. 
dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and now over to Sandra, hopefully to... Well, I'm... Day, really. I enjoyed listening to the story this morning. Ah, lovely. Right, OK. Lost my bits and pieces, so here we go. So in this story, which I had a read-through of this morning, it's from Kings 19. I found myself um, trying to do voices for the characters as we went through. Um, Jezebel sounds a bit like Margaret Thatcher, and I'm not sure why. Watch out for that. OK, it's not a political comment in any way. I'd just like to say that. King Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done. Ahab told her how Elijah had killed all the prophets with a sword. Those were all the prophets of, of Baal. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. Jezebel said, <clears throat> Jezebel said, by this time tomorrow, I will kill you. I will kill you as you killed those prophets. If I don't succeed, may the gods punish me terribly. <laughs> when Elijah heard this, he was afraid. So he ran away to save his life, and he took his servant with him. When they came to Beersheba in Judah, Elijah left his servant there. Then Elijah walked for a whole day into the desert. He sat down under a bush and he asked to die. Elijah prayed, oh, I've had enough, Lord. Let me die. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then Elijah lay down under the tree and he slept. Suddenly an angel came to him and touched him. Now, I wasn't sure about an angel's voice at all. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Suddenly an angel came to him and touched him, and the angel said, get up and eat. Elijah saw near his head a loaf baked over coals and a jar of water, so he ate and he drank, and then he went back to sleep. Later the Lord's angel came to him a second time. The angel touched him and said, do you know, I think it should be a bit more manly, shouldn't it, the angel? Should we go a bit more manly? Get up and eat. If you don't, the journey will be too hard for you. So Elijah got up and ate and drank. And the food made him strong enough to walk for 40 days and 40 nights. He went to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There, Elijah went into a cave and stayed all night. Then the Lord spoke his word to him. It needs to be quite boomy, I think. Elijah, why are you here? Elijah answered, Lord God of heaven's armies, I've always served you the best I could, but the people of Israel have broken their agreement with you. They've destroyed your altars. They've killed your prophets with swords. And I'm the only prophet left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, stand in front of me on the mountain. I will pass you by. Then a very strong wind blew. It was so strong. Thank you, Ali. It was, thank you. It was so strong that it caused the mountains to break apart. It broke apart large rocks in front of the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a quiet, gentle voice. When Elijah, when Elijah heard it, he covered his face with his coat. He went out and he stood at the entrance of the cave. And then the voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? Elijah answered, Lord God of heaven's armies, I have always served you the best I could. But the people of Israel have broken their agreement with you. They've destroyed your altars. They've killed your prophets with swords and I'm the only prophet left. And now they're trying to kill me too. And the Lord said to him, 
go back on the road that leads to the desert around Damascus, enter that city. There, pour olive oil on Hazael to make him king over Aram. Then pour oil on Jehu, son of Nimshi, to make him king over Israel. Next, pour oil on Elisha, son of Shaphat, and Abel Mahola. He will be a prophet in your place. The end. Fantastic. Thank you, Sandra, for the voices. I'll, uh, I'll wait for the emails about Margaret Thatcher later. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so, <laughs> so now we're going to have a little bit of activity. I know, you know, we have to be careful with too much activity, but Kate's going to lead us in a little bit of activity now to help us to think this through a bit. Okay, right, so do we have any children in the room that would like to come up, or adults alike, Matt, that would like to come up and do just a little bit of uh, an activity with us? So come up here, and we're going to socially distance, so we're going to keep our markers. One thing I do need, though, which I've left on my chair, is my whistle. Now I look like a PE teacher. Okay, so... Come on, guys, let's get, get you into a space. You're in the same family bubble, so you can, you can do it however you like, as long as you keep uh, your distance from me and Matt. And we've got Ali. I don't know, does Owen? Owen's hiding at the back. It's not going to be that bad, but we do need to do a little bit of a warm-up before we start. So we need to move our head from side to side like this. And maybe down a bit like this, and back a bit like this. And then we need to lift our shoulders up like this and get our shoulder rolling. And we need to, is everything clicking? Okay, that's a good sign, really. And we need to perhaps swing our arms a little bit. Swing our arms. Maybe, maybe we could touch our toes. Anybody in the church would like to do this, you're more than welcome to just join in with us. We're all up for it. No, you can touch your own toes, Matt. Okay, so a, a few toe touches and stretch up high to the ceiling. Oh, yes. And go down really low and really high. And one last time really low. Are you feeling a little bit warm? We're ready to go. Okay, so the idea of this game is sleeping lions, but it's sleeping Elijah's. Okay, so we're all going to lie on the floor. Can you get down or get as comfortable as you can on the floor? Now, when I blow the whistle... Is that loud enough? I'm go you're going to jump up and I'm going to shout out some activities for you to do. Okay. Are you ready? Are you sleeping? Are you all sleeping? Are you enjoying yourself, Ali? <laughs> She's sleeping. Okay. At home, if you want to join in, you're more than welcome to join in too. Okay. So, are you sleeping? I think you're giggling. Be sleeping. A nice snoring over there. Good, good. I can tell that you're asleep. <whistles> Ten star jumps. <laughs> and back to sleep, everybody. Back to sleep. Oh, that's your rest time. Oh, it's going to get worse, I'm sure. <laughs> Are you asleep? Kathleen, are you asleep? You're giggling. You need to be sleeping. <whistles> Squats. Oh. Ten. <laughs> Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. I'm back to sleep, everybody. Are you feeling tired? Not yet. Okay. Let's see what I can do next. Okay. I've got to think really hard. Anybody in the church got any ideas of what exercise we can do next? Burpees. Stand up. That's it. Good lad. And give a bit of a little bow. Here we go. Happy birthday. Off you go. Thanks, guys. Fantastic. Sorry about those on the live stream. We're having a 
a bit of a mare today with technology. This is the first time in the last since we began, so apologies for that if you cut out. But uh, I did all of them. And to just so you know, <laughs> I, was, I was loads better than anybody else. So, <laughs> well, okay, I'm a vicar, I can't lie. Fair enough, I was rubbish. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so that's, we just had a little think about that, a little bit of think about going to sleep and waking up. So we're now, I'm now going to pass over to Abby, who's going to tell us a little bit more about our theme today and our thinking through Elijah. Okay. Join the Church of England, they said. It'd be fun, they said. Okay, right. I'm going to make you do some work now. Um, I want you to have a think about an answer for two questions. So, today, what are you thankful for? Given that it's harvest, we're bringing things as an expression of our thankfulness, of our thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? And then the second question is, what are you worried about? Now, if you want to share that with your neighbours, please do. If you want to keep that to yourself, especially that last question, you can do that too. But just have two minutes. You might have to talk across your social distancing, but that's okay. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for and what are you worried about? Okay, start to draw that to a close, perhaps. It would be lovely, if you're willing, to perhaps shout out some of the things we're thankful for. Go for it, Jade. Um, starting a new job. Starting a new job, brilliant. And I'll start this afternoon. Amazing, amazing. Friends. And friends, definitely. Where is my... Family. Family, absolutely. Pastor. Pastor. I'm with you all the way, absolutely. I don't know quite what our family would do without pastor, actually. <laughs> okay. Please don't feel any obligation, but would anybody like to say anything that they're worried about? The same thing to be thankful for. The same thing to be thankful for. Say again, sorry, my teacher. Family. So worried about family as well as thankful for them, yes. Yeah, being ready for work on time. Being ready for work on time, yeah, yeah, new job. Because it's good people realise that we're in a pandemic. Yeah, so worried about... Because they were trying to protect me. Worrying about people, worrying about people not taking the, the rules seriously. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Amen. God is looking after your family, Roger. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that back. Is that all right? Because so people can hear off on the live stream. So Roger's just saying that he, if we're having faith in God, we can know he listens to our prayers and will answer us and that he will look after us. Thank you. Amen. Yes, that's definitely a clap. It sometimes feels weird, doesn't it? Especially on a day like today where we're talking about Harvest Festival and Harvest Thanksgiving. To try and work out how, in this weird time, we get to be thankful, but also worried or anxious or concerned about things all at the same time. How those two truths can be true at the same time. 
And this year really hasn't necessarily made feeling thankful very easy, has it? Um, my youngest brother, Peter, uh, got a new T-shirt this week, and he sent me a picture. I'm really hoping the technology holds up enough to be able to see the picture of it. Oh, one back from that, please. Oh, giving away all my own birdies. <laughs> oh, well. There we go. It says, I don't know if you can see it, it says, 2020, one star, very bad, would not recommend. <laughs> With my brother's big bushy beard on the top of there. You know, on the face of it, 2020 has not had much to recommend it, has it? Got a global pandemic, lockdown, people being poorly, people losing people they love. And actually, I really like the honesty of my brother's T-shirt because sometimes, you know, when we paint a smile on our faces and the whole, you know, we've talked about it in the recent weeks, haven't we? I'm fine. It doesn't really cut it, does it? Even if we're meant to be being thankful. So this 2020 Harvest Festival feels a bit different from other times, doesn't it? So we thought we'd look and see what can Elijah's story tell us about how God can work through feeling worried or anxious, but knowing we should be thankful too. Because you'd think, wouldn't you, that Elijah, after all we just heard about his story, you'd think he was going to be seriously happy, very thankful, brimming with excitement and success. He's just done away with the 450 prophets of Baal. He's beaten Jezebel. All the people of Israel have turned back to God. God is clearly on his side. It's all good. But actually, you know, he doesn't operate like that, does he? His problems haven't gone away. Jezebel's angry. She's promising dire threats and warnings over him. So we don't find him celebrating or giving thanks after this amazing success. No, we find him running away quickly into the wilderness, wondering what on earth he's going to do next. And he sits under a tree and he tells God, I have had enough. I'm done. Can't see any light at the end of this particular tunnel. How many of us have said or thought similar words to that over the last few months or even before that? I've had enough. This is too much. Yeah. I know I have. And I wonder how many of us, like me, have said those words either internally or externally and then felt really guilty because... I've got so much more than everybody else. My family are around me and I've got a garden. I, they, you know, all, of, all of that stuff. But actually, it doesn't matter what we have or don't have. It doesn't stop us feeling what we feel. Extraordinary victory, huge success haven't stopped Elijah giving up. And sometimes I think we have to give ourselves permission, don't we, to feel all those feelings. To, you know, God knows we're feeling them. After all, why would we not be honest with him? So maybe we need to be real with God before we do anything else this harvest time. Draw from Elijah's example. If you're in that place today, don't feel guilty. Allow yourself to do what Elijah did. Name the feelings. Be real with God. Help you in, let him help you in that place. You can do these two things at the same time. Those two truths can be truths at the same time. God is good. Things are difficult. But this harvest time, yes, let's give thanks. Even in the midst of the difficulties, even in the midst of the trouble, let's give thanks for what God does provide for us, that he does care enough for us to make sure we'll be okay. You know, harvest has always been traditionally about celebrating, giving thanks for the things that God has provided for us, the food, the goodness, the world. You know, if we're thinking about being fit for good, thinking about food and that kind of thing, it's an important part of any good training regime, isn't it? As is an iron lung after that little lot. But anyway. But Elijah doesn't know what he needs or where to turn. He's just laid down and gone to sleep. And did you notice that God didn't argue with him? Didn't tell him to get a grip? Didn't tell him to count his blessings? Instead, he lets him sleep. 
And then the angel, he sounded something like a kind of a gentle secretary, I felt, in that particular <laughs> rendition. Yeah. The angel gently wakes Elijah up and gives him something to eat and to drink and then lets him go back to sleep again. It's like any good mum or dad would do, isn't it, with a child who's poorly or feeling exhausted. You know, just have a little bit of something, just a little bit of something to keep you going, and then you can go back to sleep. So tender, so loving. Elijah doesn't have to do anything in that moment but rest and feed his body, take what God is providing for him, and the most basic physical requirements, and accept it. Traditionally, again, harvest festivals were a chance for farmers to stop work for just a while, to stop their busyness and look back and see the goodness, celebrate the goodness that God had done over the last year. And it's in that kind of stopping, that kind of stillness, that Elijah finds God in the next bit of the story. You know, by the time he gets to Mount Horeb, he's a bit better physically, isn't he? It says he's had enough energy to, to do the 40 days and nights walk to the mountain. But he's actually not in a much better place himself, in himself. He's still questioning what it's all about. What was the point? I still can't do anything. You know, they're still going to be against me. And God calls him to the mountain and tells him that he's going to pass by. His presence will be right there with Elijah. He just needs to stay still and wait for it. And wind and earthquake and fire all come. But God isn't in any of those things. Instead, Elijah hears, after all of that, hears a gentle voice. In other translations, it says a sound of sheer silence. The calm after the storm. And he knows for certain sure that God is there with him. Now, maybe for some of us, lockdown, enforced stillness, working from home. Maybe it wasn't what we were planning for or what we would have wished for, but maybe some, for some of us, not all of us, some of us that gave us a chance to stop still for just a while, to be still and know God in new or different ways to hear him in the quiet. And maybe that's something we want to give thanks for today, that chance to stop and regroup with God. And this part of Elijah's story also reminds us that whatever our situation, we can give thanks that God never leaves us. He is as much with us in the dark caves where Elijah found himself as he is on the mountaintops. Our experience of God is not always a loud shout. Sometimes he speaks deliberately, gently, into that silence instead. And if we listen, we might well hear words of encouragement, quiet whispers of love and affirmation. Just like Elijah. Now, harvest was always a time to celebrate the efforts of those around us, particularly traditionally, of course, farmers and people who produce our food. It was a time to give thanks for the community and with the community that God had put around us. And at the end of this story, we see God recommission Elijah to go and find his new community. God reassures Elijah he's not alone, and he tells him to go and find others, anoint two new kings, Anoint his successor, Elisha. He will once again have community around him, people around him he can trust. And in this 2020 version of Harvest Thanksgiving, maybe we can widen out the community that we give thanks for this year. Perhaps this year more than any other year. You know, we've seen communities draw together to look after the lonely, to provide for those who are self-isolating or shielding. We've had people looking after those who are poorly, people caring for those who are bereaved. We've clapped for the NHS. We've thought about and given thanks for the other key workers around us. We can give thanks that we're not alone, that we have friends and family. Just in 30 seconds, turn to your neighbour and say who in your communities you've been thankful for over these last few months. Go. Go.
Okay, I'm going to encourage you to draw to a halt. I'm not going to take lots of things. I'm going to ask us all, I'm going to go one, two, three, and then we all shout out the names that we wanted to say. People at home, you can do this too. So, one, two, three, go. NHS. NHS. Amazing. God hears all of that, even if we can't work it out. You know, we can be thankful that with those communities, that community around us, with God's perfect provision, knowing what we need before we do, with his tender care for us, we can look forwards even while things still don't look great. We can still think about the fruit that we might be able to bear, the harvest that we might be part of reaping for God's kingdom, as long as we keep listening, trusting, because the thing that's easy to forget is just like we're not out of this COVID crisis yet. Elijah wasn't out of the dark place he was in when God sent him on his next mission. He spoke to him in that sound of sheer silence and sent him on to the next thing. So even when we are feeling sad, even when we're feeling really low or down or in a dark place, we can know from this story that God doesn't leave us alone. That he still has a purpose and a will for our lives, that we can still bear fruit. (coughs) Now I don't believe, I genuinely don't believe for a second that God sends these difficulties, these hard times. It's easy to start thinking that about why we're being punished, all that kind of thing. I don't believe it for a second. But I do believe that Jesus came and defeated the darkness once and for all. So even though the world is still broken, even even though that darkness is still around, still causing trouble, still upending lives, actually doesn't have to have any power over us and who we are in Jesus anymore. Just like God did for Elijah, Jesus will offer us that peace, that tender care, as he gently leads us through what are still difficult times, yes, but towards that next season of fruitfulness. I'm sure that that's what he's doing here in Finham. However weird 2020 has turned out to be, however much we would not recommend 2020, it's still something worth celebrating, isn't it? Giving thanks for that Jesus knows us, loves us, has defeated that darkness, and we can go and build his kingdom, working with him, in him, and making a difference, bearing fruit in his name. Amen. Use this song to just come to Jesus now. Come wherever you are. It's called Come As You Are. Come wherever your feeling, however you're feeling, and let him just do that work of renewal, of regrouping, resetting, allowing us to go out and bear fruit.
Kate's now going to lead us in a time of prayer. So today we're going to make our prayers in a slightly different way. Um, I'm going to give you full instructions, so don't worry. Um, we will be standing up, but if you want to sit down at any time, feel free to do that. Just pray however you need to. That's absolutely fine. So let's stand as we pray. So we're going to face towards Finham Park and Finham Park Primary School, um, Stichel School, um, Grange Farm, any play group or anywhere where education is happening, uh, whichever one you want to face towards, that's up to you, whichever way your school is. So Father God, we thank you for the schools in our area. Protect all the children that attend these schools. Help them in their learning to be happy and joyful, leaving all worries behind them. Show them how to develop their talents, to find the path you have set before them, and to be courageous and adventurous to try new things and learn new skills. Bring wisdom to the teachers and support staff so they can best help the children nurture these skills. Give them grace as they help students love and strength when they feel weak. When they feel unseen, remind them that no moment goes unnoticed, that they are shaping the future of our children in small and yet incredibly important ways every day. Bless them, Lord, as their faithfulness will forever impact on generations to come. Amen. So now turn towards the university, both uh, Coventry or Warwick Uni, wherever you uh, think they may be. Um, and let's pray. Father, as Coventry welcomes new students, help those who have moved away from home and are finding out what new people, routines and places are like. Be with them in the choices they make and help them to build lasting friendships and good learning opportunities. Also be with their families as they will miss them and they worry about them at this time. Help their parents let go of their worries as their children grow into young adults and become more independent. Help the lecturers and all the teachers there support the students as best they can. In Jesus' name, amen. Of love, friendship, joy and happiness. Lord, in these times where we have many restrictions, help us to be patient with each other. And for those families that are apart, help us to find new ways to communicate and show your love. Amen. So now our last prayer is to face outwards towards the door um, or towards the windows, whichever way you would want to face. Father God, be with us as we enter this week, wherever it takes us. Help us know your love and share it with those we meet. Amen. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's end our time together here in church, just to say with the grace, but just to say, because I think it's raining outside, I think it is raining outside, uh, unfortunately because uh, under these circumstances obviously we can't allow people to come back in the building, so we'll need to move off fairly quickly if it is raining outside. Um, uh, as just to be careful of our, our COVID restrictions right now. Um, 
But it's great to have had have you all with us today. And for those who stuck with us online, apologies for some of the uh, issues we've had today. But I think it's the Lord's blessing to us that as we are saying thank you for all this stuff, we understand that you know, God has given us all these things to use for his kingdom in this place. Um, whether or not sometimes they work well, sometimes they work not so well. So let's say uh, the grace together, shall we? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to end with a, a famous uh, Thanksgiving harvest song. <laughs>